The garden was something that I had always thought about. I was probably like most busy mothers. We were, you know, a busy working family. And I would find it difficult to feed my family in a healthy way quickly. So I decided to change our diet. And this happened throughout the course of the campaign, and it was really simple things. Adding more fruits and vegetables, trying to sit down as a family and prepare a meal a couple of times a week, eating out a little bit less, uh, eliminating processed and sugary foods um, as much as possible. And I saw some really immediate results with just those minor changes. And I thought, well, if I could help other families kind of learn these small changes, in my role as First Lady, that would be a, a good thing. Today we are amending our soil, and we've gotten our soil tested. It's actually in really good shape. Um, but so what we're going to do is add a few amendments to um, increase the fertility of the soil, to sort of provide a lot of stability for the soil, um, and bring it into balance. It's basically setting the foundation that we'll build on for years, years to come. We're doing our first till. We're churning over the soil uh, about we're going down six to eight inches deep, and then we're going to spread some amendments. We're going to use um, some sulfate of potash, which is basically to add some sulfur. We have a crab meal, uh, which is going to add uh, our calcium and uh, nitrogen, which is absolutely critical. Um, and our crabs are sourced from the Chesapeake, so uh, we're all we're keeping it in the region. Guess what that means. No work, no spuds. No work, no turnip, no tank, no flying fortress, no victory. Bear that in mind, all you victory gardeners, and work for victory. This is the first uh, vegetable garden since Eleanor Roosevelt's victory garden in World War II. When we look back at the, so the records, was actually had a really tough time getting it established. And in the end, it was a plot, you know, probably about the size of one bed that we have here, that one of the daughters of somebody who worked here tended to. So as a sort of really productive, you know, feeding a lot of people garden, uh, this is the first one in well over 100 years. The seeds uh, that we're using from, from Monticello that Thomas Jefferson had passed down were given to us by Peter Hatch, who's the head gardener at, at Monticello. Thomas Jefferson, as more than any one man, changed the way we eat uh, in this country and the way we, we, and the way we grow food. When his ambassadors would go out all over the world, he would ask them to bring back seeds. And he's the first person to start seasonal growing. That is something that people are really sort of coming back to now and thinking about ways to you know, use a diversity of crops and keep growing throughout the year. People were uh, uniformly excited about trying to make this happen. Today is getting the soil ready, then we'll come back in a couple of weeks to actually do the planting, and then sometime in June, right? Right around the time that school is over, hopefully we'll have lots of great vegetables and fruits, we'll harvest them, and then we'll bring you guys into the kitchen in the White House. The, the kids from Bancroft who've helped us plant this garden have just been absolutely phenomenal. Well, this is still yes. Hey, look, Sam, there's a carrot. Four of them came and gave these <laughs> talks about what they've learned. It was just mind-blowing. Uh, kids talked about, one kid talked about how she now eats all of her fruits and all of her vegetables at dinner, and her mom is noticing the difference but that her favorite vegetable is carrots. And just like people, I quote, carrots have a history. The kids took this to a level that I could never have even imagined. They've just been tremendous. We wanted the focus to be on kids because you can affect children's behavior so much more easily than you can adults. And I saw that in my own life. My kids, you know, jumped on the new routine uh, and didn't miss a beat. And they began, began to monitor our behavior more so than I was monitoring theirs. And also I want to encourage people to think about um, doing more family meals. We found 
uh, that we've been able to do that. And, you know, part of the message is if the President of the United States can sit down with his family and have dinner, hopefully more families uh, find the time to do the same thing. Smell this. <laughs> Peppery. It's so far, it's been incredible. We've produced over 200 pounds of food already, going on 210. And, you know, it's, it's not even July yet. So it's pretty, uh, we're doing pretty well. Our first major dinner was a, a small dinner of like 20 of the sort of nation's top economic advisors and thinkers. And we did the, f the whole first salad was, was completely out of the garden. I mean, we actually have a lot, so... Okay. We need a little more. I don't think about this with my kids in terms of what I want them to be today. I'm thinking about who I want them to be when they go to college and when they raise their own kids. How will they make choices about what they eat when they're away from me? What will be the messages that are in their head as they think about, you know, whether they're going to drink the uh, soda or whether they're going to have a glass of water? How will they... Um, engage their own children in these messages early on so that uh, these become habits that are just a part of life and not something that you have to change in midstream. So the garden is really uh, an important introduction to what I hope will be a new way um, that our country thinks about food. Um, uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's the story of the garden and it's been quite an amazing success if I do say so myself. <laughs>